Uh, so at this time, I'm going to read for you our scripture passage. It's taken from the Gospel of Luke, uh, chapter 24. So if you have a Bible, you can open it up or turn it on, or you can follow with the words on the screen. The word of the Lord says this. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. And when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And while they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. Say, let's say this together. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. And when they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, mother of James, and the others with them who told, them this, who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. This is the word of God. At this time, we're going to dismiss our junior high students, grades 6 to 8. If you're in grades 6 to 8, you can go to the back. Uh, Pastor Enoch is waving his hands. You can join him. Uh, and we have a special program for our junior high students. This is Pastor Jordan. Welcome, church. Look at that. It's a powerful mic today. Good morning. I hope both of you are doing good. Hope you're happy. You can turn to your neighbor, give them a smile. It is Easter, amen? This is, this is a, I believe Pastor Ken referred to it as the Super Bowl of Christianity. It is the highlight of the year. And that, I saw someone sneer right there, the Super Bowl. Like, what kind of sport is that? It's like the NBA Finals and that. It is, it is the highlight of Christianity. And it's the time that we celebrate that our Lord Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. And I want to talk... Uh, this morning quickly about, uh, just for a few minutes, about roadblocks to experiencing the resurrection, the power of the resurrection, because there's things that can actually get between us and experiencing the power of the resurrection. You can actually hear the story over and over, and uh, these women had heard the story. They had heard that Jesus was going to, said that he would die and he would rise from the dead, but when they came to the tomb, uh, they weren't expecting a resurrection. They weren't expecting anything to happen, and so I want to talk about different roadblocks that get in the way. Um, of us really truly experiencing the joy and the power of the resurrection. So the first one really is expectation. And um, some of you have expectation that you came here today. Some of you had expectation as you're coming in the parking lot that there'd be a spot for you or uh, you had expectation maybe after the service. How many of you know there's going to be food afterwards? Yeah. How many of you are expecting butter chicken? Yeah, you better expect it. I didn't expect it, but that's what's coming today is butter chicken. And uh, there's also pizza as well. And there's Chinese noodles, okay? Now, I bet you weren't expecting that, right? That type of fusion of food. We, we all have expectations. You can have expectations when you go to a hotel or when you're visiting a restaurant. You can have very high expectations or you can have low expectations. Um, there's times in my life where I didn't expect um, really good things to happen. And, um, and this is really where we find these women here is that they have come to a point where they're, they're in a point of mourning. They're coming to the tomb to mourn, and they've bought spices. They've come prepared to mourn, just like as you would go to a grave site or a funeral home, and you would bring flowers, or you would bring words of condolence. That's where uh, these women's hearts were at. They had seen Jesus crucified, and now they're coming uh, to mourn him. They're coming to prepare body with spices. Talks in the other gospels that their biggest concern at this point is how they're going to get the rock moved away how they're going to move the rock so they can put the spices, so they can continue doing what they expected to do on that day, on that first Easter day. They didn't expect to be the first eyewitnesses. They didn't expect to give a testimony that he has risen. They expected to come and mourn. And there's times in our life that we don't really expect um, great things to happen. Um, when I was preparing to leave, I spent 13 years in China. So as I was preparing to leave, we spent a lot of time um, packing up stuff. How many of you have ever moved before? Okay, one person has moved. I see some participation over there. 
if you've ever moved before, it's a lot of work to pack up things. It's a lot of work to pack up things. And uh, we had been preparing to move back to Canada after 13 years in China. And we didn't want to send a container of stuff. And so we were giving stuff away. Sonia was giving away all the shorts that she didn't ever want me to keep when we got married. And she was just giving stuff away. Um, you know, it wasn't making it. And so during this period, it was a very busy time, a very stressful time. And um, I was just preparing to go back home and there was this evangelist couple this Chinese evangelist couple and they said we want to treat you to a vacation now how many of you would enjoy a free vacation okay but what if it comes through people that you don't think has a lot of money right then you're kind of you know yes I want to come but you know what kind of you kind of have to prepare yourself that is going to be a little rough and so I was preparing myself for a rough journey and uh, I was telling Sonia, I don't even know if the Lord wants us to go on this journey. When we got to the train station, we checked for our passports, and I realized I left them in the van that I let my friend borrow. And so I called him up, and I said, you got to, you know, I don't have the passports. You got to come as fast as possible. But as he's coming, the time's getting closer and closer to the train leaving. I realized, like, maybe the Lord is in this. Maybe we don't have to go on this trip after all. And Sonia's almost in tears because she really wants to go on this trip um, to Wuishan. And so we, we finally get our passports just in time. We run to the train. We get on the train. We're sweating. Uh, and we, we prepare now for a 10-hour train journey with kids. And uh, we, we, we didn't have a lot of money at that time preparing to go back. And so I, I decided I was going to be very cheap and share a bunk bed with Nathan. That's the last time I'm sharing a bunk bed with Nathan. It was so tight. It was so small, and he was kicking all throughout the night. Um, and I was up on the top bunk in China. When you go on the trains, they have one, two, three bunk beds. We were on the top, third bunk bed. And so I couldn't sleep at all that night. And we arrive in this place that is, um, it looks barren. It looks, it looks dusty. It looks, it looks horrible. And I, I just internally, I'm like, I'm going to have to fast now for three days. That's what I'm going to have to do, fasting. If you don't know what fasting is, it's going without food. And I was preparing myself mentally to go without food because I thought the food that's going to be offered in this place is not going to be something I want to eat. And so our, our host came, picked us up at the train station, So we're going to take you to a hotel. And I, I just thought this is going to be so rough, like Sonia. This is just, I know they're blessing us, but... I hope they see it as a blessing that I actually came because this is going to be rough. And so we're, we're weaving through, you know, the middle of nowhere, these hills, um, just in the middle of nowhere. And then all of a sudden, we, we cross this over this giant hill and we start to come down into a valley. And as we come down into this valley, I see this picture and I want Alan to show it up if you can show up this picture I saw in the middle of nowhere. Not that one. There. Hallelujah. My good, I could not believe my eyes. Now, I know some of you, this is not a big deal. But when you're thinking of fasting for three days, and you see, not that, you see that. I said, the Lord is in this trip. He's, he's all over this trip. The McDonald's was right at the entrance to our hotel. And um, they took us there for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And um, I don't know if you've ever done this. I know you're old Chinese, but I don't know if you've ever done McDonald's Chinese style where you order so much food. You know, normally we order one meal for yourself, right? But when you go to a Chinese restaurant, you order tons of food, right? Like tons, more than you can take, more than you can eat, and then you have to carry out. Uh, they said, how many Big Macs do you want? I said, I just eat one. Oh, no, pastor. You got to at least eat two, Right. Um, I was so blessed. I was also sick of McDonald's by the end of that trip. But I was so blessed. And um, God really went above my expectations. And uh, I got to see something. You can go to the next picture there if you want to show them. I, I got to see something so unique. Um, I got to see where tea comes from. Where all the tea. There I am picking tea leaves uh, with Nathan. And we had an incredible trip. Every single day was incredible. They took us out. They paid for everything. It was incredible. It blew my expectations, totally blew my expectations. I was expecting to fast, and I was feasting on chicken nuggets like I've never feasted before. It was incredible. And I had such a great time. I was so happy I win. And, and so 
This is where really we see when you have an expectation when you come into church, if you're really expecting nothing to happen, if you're really coming in and you really have low expectations, uh, you can throw back onto our sermon picture. I know you're checking out the tea leaves. That's where David's tea comes from. I've been there. Um, when you have expectations or you have no expectations, and this is really where we find the women coming into the tomb to mourn, to pour out their spices, to pour out their tears upon Jesus. And the angel confronts them with this reality. And he says, why are you here? Why are you looking for the living among the dead? Why are you here? What, what, what brought you here when you heard the words of Jesus? You should know that he's not going to be here, that he's risen from the dead. But their expectation was that nothing could happen. Nothing good was going to happen on, on this Easter. It was only going to be about mourning. An expectation is so important. You know, people come into church all the time with an expectation that's just going to be a time of singing. They're going to have to sit through a preacher talking, you know, and um, you don't want to sit through a preacher talking too long if you know there's going to be butter chicken afterwards. Um, but we have very low expectations sometimes. When God speaks to us and he speaks to us from a resurrected point where he says, don't look for me in the grave any longer. And we can come, you know, sometimes with our expectations, really, that we come to church because it's, it's the right cultural thing to do. That's our expectation that once a year, it, it's a good time to go to church. And sometimes we go to church because it's a good thing because our, our mom goes to church or our family goes to church. Or sometimes we go to church every week because it's expected of us. We're, we call ourselves a Christian. And so even when we don't want to, we, we, get, we wake ourselves up and we come to church. But having the viewpoint and having kind of the um, thought when you approach Jesus and when you approach what Jesus' word says and what God's word says, he, he, we're not coming to him to mourn. We're not coming to him just to remember and just coming here like it's a memorial. We're coming to worship the risen Savior. We're coming here with an expectation that God is going to move. Amen? And imagine if they came, the women, with this expectation that Jesus was going to be risen from the dead. Imagine how different they would have felt. Imagine how they would have come. They wouldn't have had to spend their money on the spices. They wouldn't have to be mourning. They would have had this expectation that something good is about to happen, that God is about to move. And that's the expectation that God wants us to have on this Easter Sunday, but also every Sunday, that we would have an expectation that God is a God of the miraculous, that he is risen, amen? And because he's risen from the dead, his promises in the word of God are true today. And so he is still healing us today. He is still moving today. And so God blows away the woman's expectations. He takes these women that came here to mourn, and he totally blows away their expectations. The next thing that the angel said to them, after he said, why do you look for the living among the dead? He said, he is not here. He is risen. He said, remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified on the third day, and be raised again. And it says in verse 8, then they remembered his words. Now, I don't know how many of you um, get told things and then you forget it. If you're married, you've probably been told something before and you've forgotten it. If you have kids, you know, our kids, we have, <laughs> Sonia is so good. We, we, we tell them their chores, and then she's put like a graph of their chores with different pictures so they can see that they have to make their bed, they have to, um, they have to um, have breakfast, they have to get dressed. It's all there in pictures, you know? You, you can't have any excuse now. Before, there were so many excuses of, oh, I, I forgot, I don't remember what I'm supposed to do. It's there in pictures now. And even yesterday, you know, Sonia brought up and said, you know, you're supposed to have a shower and that. And it, I, I'm not supposed to have a shower. She's like, it's right there in the pictures, you know? Go look at your picture, you know? And then he went to the picture, and then he was like, oh, I remember. I remember. The, women, they, they totally couldn't remember at this point that Jesus had said, I'm going to die, I'm going to raise again. In Luke, there's four different accounts where Jesus told them very clearly, I'm going to die I'm going to be handed over to sinners. I'm going to die. And then three days later, I'm going to rise from the dead. He told them very clearly. 
But you know, during that point, there's probably a lot of distractions, a lot of things that were happening, a lot of miracles, probably a lot of other points in their sermon. And that didn't really jump out to them at that point. They didn't really remember it. And sometimes we need things to help us trigger memories in our mind. Sometimes we need things. And it's amazing how a picture or even different smells will trigger different memories in our mind or different, different videos. I, I wanted to kind of show you a quick video clip. I, it's not going to mean anything to you. I'm just wasting time up here for 10 seconds. I want to show you this because this triggered such an incredible memory in my mind this week. Um, it was a video that um, I took years and years ago. And I love taking videos. I love taking pictures. And always on vacation, Sonia's like, stop with the camera. Put the camera down. And I always tell her, you know, sometime in the future, we're going to watch this video, and you're going to love it, you know? You're going to love it. And um, she's always like, oh, come on. The kids hate it, you know? And now if I pull out the camera, I don't know what I've done. I've damaged them so much. They, they just run away from the camera if I pull it out. But I was watching this week. I was looking for um, a do document on my computer, and I found this little video clip. And so if it's running, you can play it. I'm saying, Mommy. Why do you love Mommy? Me, because I... Me, because... Because I... Because I'm in Thailand. Oh, you love mommy because you're in Thailand? What is your best memory of you and mommy together? <laughs> your favorite memory? Uh, uh, elephants. You like going the elephants? What else? Anything else? Okay, now I have a question for you. What is the most important thing mommy has ever taught you? Uh, the most important thing? Uh, go to Thailand. <laughs> mommy taught you to go to Thailand? That's the most important? Yeah. What about Jesus? Jesus. 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 And okay gave us our passport. You can cut it off there, okay? Jesus? Who's Jesus, you know? And uh, it's amazing how, you know, I was pulled out this video and then I showed it to Nathan. He couldn't remember, but as soon as he saw that, he was like, Thailand, let's go back to Thailand. I'm like, we're not going back to Thailand. We're not going back there. That was a one time. That's why we have the video, so you can watch the video of you in Thailand. But it was amazing. As I watched that, all the memories from that trip, I'd completely kind of put that trip in the back of my mind. It's been so many years. Just a little video clip brought back so much emotion. It brought back so many memories. And this is what happened. As soon as the angel said, don't you, don't you remember? Don't you remember when Jesus was with you? He told you very clearly that he would die, and then on the third day, he would be raised from the dead. And as soon as they heard that, it's like they remembered. Something triggered in their memory. And I thought this morning for some of you, there's so many people that we've been raised in the church, we've come to church, or our life, or we had an experience with God. And yet life can go on, just like with these women. Other things were happening in their life. Other things go on, and all of a sudden those memories begin to fade in the background. What once was an encounter with God and what once was something that changed your life becomes something of the past. It's like just like this memory of Thailand, just something I shoved way back in the back of my mind. It only would reappear if someone would trigger it or something would bring back to my memory by seeing that video. And there's so many people that come to Easter one time because they grew up in the church or they attended church when they were growing up with their grandma or their mother. And today I felt like the Lord wants to remind you that he has touched you, that he has called you, that he hasn't forgotten about you. And he wants to remind you of his word, that he's still with you today, amen? That he's still with you today. And God, I believe that God's presence wants to come in this place and God wants to touch you. He wants to move in your life and he wants to remind you that he's there with you. The last thing we see here is that as he was coming back here, and so the second roadblock is forgetting. You can forget what God has done. You can forget the power of God. You could be in church and you could have had God move in your life before and yet now you're coming to churches because it's the right thing to do. You don't have that same feeling you used to have. You, and you know it. 
You know it. Even as I speak now, you know that you're not in the same place that you used to be with God. That fire is no longer in your heart. And God wants that fire to burn, that power of the resurrection to be real in your life today. That he is alive and that he's moving. It, it shouldn't just be a memory from the past, something from the past. It should be in your life today, active and alive today. And so we need to remember what God has done. The third thing, it says that when they came back from the tomb, the woman told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. And so as they were coming back, they have remembered the words of God. Now they're coming to Jesus' apostles, to his disciples, to tell them the good news. And look at their response. Instead of them being excited, look at their response. It says, but they did not believe the woman because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Everyone say that word, nonsense. Now, there are people that mock Christianity. They mock the resurrection. I want you to know that whatever has been said, the apostles said it first. Jesus' disciples, they said, it sounds like nonsense. It sounds ridiculous what you're talking about. Even a first-hand account from women they knew, people they knew, they said it sounds ridiculous. It sounds like nonsense. And they refused to believe them. They refused to believe them. And it's unbelief. We can have God move in our life. We can have God speak to us. We can have confirmation after confirmation, and yet we can still have unbelief. We can still have a refusal to believe. It says in Mark 16, verse 14, it says, Later Jesus appeared to the eleven as they were eating, and he rebuked them for their lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe. They refused to believe. No matter the evidence that was put in front of them, they said, I refuse to believe. I don't want to believe. I don't want to explore. I don't want to even see if it's true. And out of the eleven that were there, it was only Peter that got up and went to even check out the evidence of the tomb to see if it was true, if the tomb was indeed even empty. The other ten wouldn't even move. They weren't moved by it. They weren't moved by any sermon, any testimony. They just said, I don't believe. And that's a big roadblock we can have to encountering the power of the resurrection is when we choose to stay in unbelief. When we choose to harden our heart and say, it doesn't matter, I'm not going to let God in. I'm not going to ask those questions. I'm not going to pray. I'm not even going to explore is that I choose not to believe. And that's where these apostles were at, Jesus' own disciples. And so no matter how hardened atheist or is out there, is the apostles were the ones first to reject. They only believed it when they saw it face to face. It says now in John chapter 20, now Thomas also known as Demas, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord, but he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands, put my finger where the nails were, put my hands into his side, I will not believe. In verse 27, then Jesus said to Thomas, when he appeared to him, he said, put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop doubting and believe. And Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And there comes a point in each of our life that we have to decide, are we going to give Jesus a chance? Are we going to open up our heart to him? Or are we going to allow unbelief to rule in our heart? Are we going to pray and ask? One of the things that I always challenge people that have never had an encounter with God before. I ask them to pray and ask God if he's real to show himself to you. If he's real, you don't have to have me prove it. You can ask God to speak to you. Is that, are you real? Do you exist? Are you real today? And I believe that God is so faithful that just as he revealed himself to the apostles, that he'll reveal himself to every single one of us because he loves us. His death on the cross was for each of our sins. Amen? And a little bit of doubt doesn't scare God away. A little bit of questions doesn't scare God away. It didn't scare him away from the apostles, from his own disciples, from his own followers. He didn't abandon them because they had questions and doubts. Is that he appeared to them. He went to them. And God wants to come to each and every single one of us today. He wants to show himself real in our life. And so for some of us, we're Christians. We've been in church for a long time, but our faith has grown cold. 
It, we know that we are not on fire, and God wants to show us the power of the resurrection, that that would become real inside of our life, that we would believe him. We would believe his word in our life. For some of us, we've never encountered God before. And the challenge today would be to open up our heart and say, God, I want to explore. I want to explore. If you're real, I want you to start to show yourself to me. Just like you did to the apostles. I want you to begin to speak to me in the way that you know how to speak to me. And so I want to pray today. And as I'm praying today, I want to pray for every single one of us here. It's Easter's Resurrection Sunday. I want us to pray that we would each encounter the love of God and the power of God in our life. And I want to challenge you, if you're here and you would want to know more about uh, Christianity at the back, there's a next steps table there. We have a Bible for you. One of the best ways to start to read up and know more about God and have his plan for your life is to get a Bible and ask God to reveal himself to you through his word. And so if you don't have a Bible, Chung's at the back there. Chung's waving his hand. He's got a baby. He's a safe guy back there. He'll give you a Bible. He has some books back there. We love to meet you. We love to pray with you. If you have questions, you can come talk to myself or Pastor Ken or anyone that you see in MCBC Tagon. We'd love to talk with you, explain more. If you're here and you're a Christian, is let's not leave this place without worshiping God, recognizing that he is risen. We're not at a memorial service. We're not here just to honor someone that was a great man, a great leader. We're here to recognize that Jesus is alive today. And so let's pray today as a church. Father, I thank you for every single person here today. Lord, I thank you that you are moving in our life, God. We thank you for your presence that is here, that you're speaking into our hearts, God. You're speaking into hearts that are far from you, hearts that have grown cold, hearts that have allowed time to come between our relationship with you. And Lord, I pray that you would break into each of our lives, God, you would begin to speak to us in a fresh way, in a new way, God. For those that are here, God, that don't know you, Lord, I pray that they would sense your love, they would sense your presence today, that you would begin to pour out, God, your love upon their heart, that they would see the evidence of your presence here today. They would feel you, God. They would feel your love surrounding them. Thank you, Jesus, that you came to die for each of our sins, that you paid the price for our sins that we don't have to remain in guilt and you didn't stay dead but you rose from the dead and we celebrate the power of the resurrection that we can each be forgiven from our sins that our past can be wiped clean today that we can have a new future god and so lord we welcome your presence here today god lord we worship you god that you are the risen savior god Lord, we thank you today that your presence is here in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.